Hi there and welcome back to Loopy Mabel Vintage Style. My name is Jane and if you're new here, hello and welcome and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button then you'll be kept up to date with all the videos, all the tutorials that I do bring out. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing. So thank you so much, I really do appreciate your support. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this crochet collar. It's Peter Pan style and I'm wearing the one that's in a two-tone colour and in the tutorial I'm going to show you how to make just in a single colour just so you have an idea of how different they can look with the different yarns that you can choose. So all you're going to need for this tutorial if you're going to follow along with me is a four millimetre hook and some double knit yarn. So if you want to go and grab those items I shall see you back here in a moment. <music> this Peter Pan crochet collar I'm going to be using again the same yarn that I made in this grey one and that's the Drops Muscat Mercerized Cotton. It's 100% cotton, it's got a lovely sheen to it and it's got quite a firm texture which is what I wanted for the collar. Uh, you can use any double knit yarn uh, but I'm going to use this because it's, as I say, and I like this colour and it's going to go with uh, something that I've got in my wardrobe too and it's a 50 gram ball and it has approximately 100 meters or 109 yards and I'm just going to use the one color for this collar uh, in this one I used the gray and the white but for this one I'm just going to use the one color just to show you the difference and how it can look by mix and matching your yarns so we're going to be using that yarn you need a four millimeter hook um, if you're going to use a button version, you need some buttons. I've just chosen Mother of Pearl, but you can go for any button. If you're new to crochet, a stitch marker is useful, so you can um, mark the ends of your rows, so you know which is your stitches, so you don't lose any stitches. You need some scissors and some darning needles to sew on your ends at the end. This tutorial is in UK terms, so if you are watching from the US, you need to be aware of that. Uh, there will be full instructions in a PDF pattern which you can also download too. So let's begin. So we're going to start off by making our slip knot. So you just make your slip knot whichever you know how to do. I do have a tutorial on this if you need to refer to that. And we're going to chain 56 plus 2. So chain 56 plus 2. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through yarn over pull through so that's your chain so if you want to do 56 chains plus two more so 58 in total and I shall see you when you've got that complete right so we've got the 56 plus two so we've got 58 chains in total this collar is perfect size for an average adult lady's neck right so in the second chain from our hook so the loop on your hook does not count as a chain or anything so you're going to count back so you're going to count back one two one two so we're going to go insert our hook into that second chain from our hook and work a half treble so one two insert your hook into there so yarn over insert your hook into that second chain from the hook yarn over pull through you've got three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three and that's a half treble so we're going to do that again into the next chain so yarn over down into the next chain yarn over pull through three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through and we're going to repeat this all the way along, inserting into every chain, working half trebles. So if you just continue like that, working to every chain with a half treble, and I shall see you somewhere near 
the end. So I'm just coming to the end of this row, so I've just got a couple more to do. And the last one there, don't forget that last one. And there we go, so that's our first row of half trebles. So what we're going to do, we're going to chain one and turn, and this chain one does not count as a stitch. So chain one and turn your work. And we're going to be working back down this row. And we're going to, into that first stitch there, we're going to insert our hook and work a half treble. So insert your hook and work a half treble. And if you want to insert your stitch marker here, if you're new to crochet and you're still a little bit unsure of where the stitches begin and end, it's always best to use the stitch markers. So if you just insert your stitch marker into that stitch, and then you know when you come back to the end you won't miss that off. And we're just going to insert our hook into the next stitch and half treble again. And one more time. So we're working three half trebles. And then into the next stitch we're going to do two. So two half trebles. So one. And two. And then we're going to do one half treble into the following three again. So one. Two. And three. And then into the next, we're going to do two half trebles. And we're just going to repeat this all the way along. Working a half treble into three, the following three stitches, then two half trebles into the next, half treble into the next three, then two into the next, all the way to the end. So there's one, two, three, and then two into the next. So we just want to continue on working a half treble in the next three. And then two half trebles into the next. And I shall see you somewhere near the end and we'll go on to row three. Right, so I'm just coming to the end of this row. I've just done my trebles there, my three trebles, and I've done my two trebles. And I've got one last stitch at the end. So that's why it's important if you are new to crochet to have your stitch markers. Otherwise that could quite easily be missed, that stitch there. So I'm just going to finish off this row by inserting my hook into that last stitch and work a half treble. And that's row two. So for row three, we're going to chain one again and it doesn't count as a stitch and turn our work. And we're going to do a half treble into that very first stitch. Insert your stitch marker and we're just going to half treble all the way along. So no increases, just half treble into every stitch. All the way along, like so. I shall see at the end of row three and then we'll go on to row four. So I've come to the end of row three, so I've just got two more half trebles to go and I've got my stitch marker in so you can see where that last stitch is. So I'm just going to set my hook into these last two and I'm stitch marker there. Now if I hadn't got the stitch marker in and I was new to crochet I would probably think that was the end of my row there. So that's why I do recommend you use the stitch markers if you are fairly new to crochet so I'm just going to take that last stitch marker out and then insert my hook into that stitch. And that's row three finished. Really simple project. This is only seven rows in total. So row three, so now we're going to row four. So 
chain one and turn and that chain one does not count as a stitch turn your work and into that very first stitch one and a half treble insert your stitch marker and we're going to half treble in the next two so one and two so we've got three half trebles worked and into the next we're going to do two half trebles so there's the two and then we're going to do a half treble into the next three so one two three then two half trebles into the next I'm just going to repeat this all the way along half treble into the next three two half trebles into the next half treble into the next three two half trebles into the next repeat that all the way along and I shall leave you to continue and I shall see you somewhere round about here for row five so I'm just near the end of row four Followed by half treble in the next three remaining stitches. Don't forget that one there on the end. So that's complete row four. So we're going on to row five. So we're going to chain one and turn. And that chain one still does not count as a stitch. And for row five, we're just going to do another increase row. So we're going to half treble into that first stitch. Half treble into the following two. And then two half trebles into the next. One half treble into the following three again. And then two into the next and just repeat that all the way along for row five so just continue on like me with half treble into the next three two into the next half treble into the following three two into the next all the way along for row five row six and seven will be just half trebles into every stitch so if you want to continue row five work row six and row seven I shall see you somewhere near the end of row seven right I'm just to the end of row seven so I've just got one more half treble to do on the end one there and that completes the main part of the collar so we're just going to cut the yarn and fasten off so just trim the yarn leave a long enough tail for you to sew your ends in and just pull through and that's the main part of the collar done there so now we're going to move on to the pretty shell edging which is one of my favorite edgings I think I use this on quite a lot of my patterns I just love it it's simple to use and it's so pretty so we're just going to use this edging again uh, feel free though if you have another edging that you like to use feel free to change the edging and add your own to it we're all about our own unique style so even if you just make the body part of the collar and then add your own trim and if you do please share your pictures over on instagram on my instagram account with the hashtag loopy mabel i'd love to see what you make so on this example I'm going to stay with the same colour so you can see what it looks like with just made in the one colour as opposed to the two colours so it gives you an idea of what they look like. So we're just going to pick up and we're going to work all the way along the side edges and the bottom edges. I'm not going to touch the top the neck edge at all, I'm just going to leave that as it is. So I'm just going to re attach my yarn and it doesn't really matter which side you choose because we've been turning our work there's no right or wrong side so I'm going to start in the top corner and I'm going to attach my yarn just 
just pull it through and tie it with a knot to secure and then I'm just going to work over those ends and put my hook back in to there and pull through and chain one which does not count as a stitch I'm going to go back down into that insert my hook and work a double crochet I'm just going to pick up evenly along the side now I pick up roughly about eight double crochets along my side but it's entirely up to you but make sure when you do pick up your stitches that you're not um, picking up too many otherwise it'll end up being all ruffled or you're not picking up enough because if you don't pick up enough it will be very tight and won't look right so I find eight is just about enough so you just going to insert your hook evenly along into the side there and work double crochet so there's two three four five six seven and eight so you just want to check by laying it flat and it lies nice and flat you've got enough stitches if it didn't lay flat you've either got too many or not enough so that's about right so I picked up eight along there now in the corner I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch there and I'm going to work two more one into that same stitch and that just brings us round the corner nicely and you've got all your stitches along the edge so you just insert your hook into the tops of those stitches so you can see the stitches there there they are those V V shapes there they're the stitches so you just insert your hook into all of them with double crochet so insert your hook and double crochet so this is fairly simple so work all the way along with your double crochet and I shall see you when we come to this next corner and we'll work around the corner up to this end so I shall see you somewhere around about here so continue with double crochets all the way along and I shall see you at this corner right so I'm at the end of this second corner so I'm just got a few more double crochets to go and then I'm just going to do two into the end there and do two double crochets to bring us round and then pick up evenly eight along this side And the last one there on the end. Just lay it flat to make sure it does actually lay flat. So now we're going to work all the way back around what we've done. So we're just going to chain one, does not count as a stitch, and turn our work. And insert your hook back down into that first stitch and work a double crochet. Then we're going to skip two, so one, two, and into that next stitch we're going to do five trebles. So this is the this is the shell pattern that we're working on now. So five trebles into that same stitch. And then we're going to skip two. And then into the next one we're going to work a double crochet and then we're going to skip two so one two into that next one we're going to work five trebles and we're just going to repeat this process all the way along so five trebles 
skip two double crochet, skip two five trebles all the way along. So if you just want to repeat that all the way along, skip two five trebles, skip two double crochet, skip two five trebles to create this lovely fan scallop edging and I shall see you somewhere towards the end of the collar to fasten off and create our little button loop. So I'm just coming up the last side of the collar here and I've just done my five trebles, skip two, double crochet. So I'm going to skip two and put in my last fan shape, two, three, five and I've got two stitches left so I'm just going to double crochet into that last stitch so it's not an exact science it's very forgiving so just insert your hook into that last one with a double crochet so that just finishes off the edge of the collar there and we're just going to add our button loop which is really simple to do so I'll just show you what it looks like it's a really simple chain loop so before you cut off the end of your yarn we're just going to chain five so one two three four and five now that's generally big enough loop to get a decent size button on so I've got five chains and I'm just going to put my hook back down where I started the chains off to make it into a loop and slip stitch like so and then I'm going to cut my yarn and pull through and there is the loop for our button so I'm just going to sew in the ends so I found a lovely wooden rustic button I think it goes quite well with this yarn colour so there's our contrasting colour and there's our plain colour so obviously depending on what you're looking for it just shows you how different they can be but they go really simple seven row crochet collar well i hope you enjoyed today's tutorial if you did don't forget to give me that lovely thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and then you'll be kept up to date and if you hit the notification bell then you'll never miss out on all the videos that i do bring out I love wearing these collars, as you know, I do love to keep my neck area nice and warm. I do like a cowl or a scarf or a shawl and I do like to wear a collar as well. And the beauty of this pattern is you can make them in all different colours, mix and match, do them plain like this one on Mabel the Mannequin or contrasting edging like this one that I'm wearing now, so really versatile. And they don't take much yarn and they're brilliant as well for gift giving ideas too for maybe Christmas and birthdays. Please let me know in the comments box below which, which one you would make. Would you make the two-tone colour or would you go for a plain one? I'd love to know. Let me know what you think. Um, I do have lots more tutorials planned but if there's anything that you'd like me to cover please let me know too as well. I shall certainly add that to my to-do list. I do have a PDF pattern as I do for all my patterns which you can download and purchase from my new store that I've got at loopymablecrochet.com so please do join me over there and I have lots more patterns and tutorials coming out. So yeah so until the next time, as I always say, practice does make perfect and happy crochet. Mm -hmm.